like I'd say in 12 years, they've like had two things they couldn't do, uh, but they found solutions to doing something very similar. What were the two things? I can't remember the top of my head. It was like, I can't remember. One of them was like, because it maybe involved like, like, holding a gun or something. <laughs> Before we let you go, Joe, um, <clears throat> just because of my cover photo from 2013, <laughs> I need to ask you a bit about Cats Does Countdown. Okay, yeah. Um, I think that's... Uh, is, it, is it fair to say that's where a lot of pe people got to know you, first of all, or is, yeah, is that doing you a I, disservice? I, um, no, I think that's fair. I feel like it, it's fair because that's what I get a lot. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's that's a good marker, actually. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think so. It's been been doing it quite a few years as well now, so it's probably yeah. It must be over ten years because it's my cover photo. Twenty first. <laughs> I think I think it's about twelve years. Is it? Wow. I know it's mental. Do you enjoy doing that? I do. It's I have to pinch myself sometimes because, like, I think, like the people I work with at Zepatron who make it are so generous with what they let me do. Well, it's not even let me do. They let me do anything. Like, literally. <laughs> it's so insane. But they, what was amazing is they don't tell me the, the hoops they jump through to make things happen. I find out afterwards and feel terrible. Like, I had, uh, I did this one, this, because sometimes, like, I do less of them now because they they're getting bigger and more expensive. <laughs> like, I call them like, set pieces where I come on and do, like, a 10-minute sort of thing and, uh, um, and so one of them, I was like, I sometimes come back on as like a magician, basically. And I had this thing where this, um, the idea was a huge tank of water and I was going to try and get out of a bag and that's all chained up and stuff. And, and, and they, I get told it's too dangerous. So I'll get my half brother to do it because it sort of doesn't matter if he dies or not. <laughs> and, uh. And so the whole, so the conceit, and you know, I've got this big tank of water, and and I do the thing, and it, it, whatever. And then um, afterwards, I found out that they had to completely rewire the whole studio, so there was no wire within like ten feet of the water <laughs> and all this stuff. So the whole thing had to be reconfigured <laughs> for like one like jump. <laughs> And they never told me. Like it just came out, like like months later. And I was like, and they were like, yeah, the, like that's the first time anyone's done that in a studio like that because it's so dangerous. Because <laughs> if it cracks and all the walls, you know, like yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, oh, I didn't know that. And I fi <laughs> find out the, the cost of something because I've had an idea that is, you know, like I, I was, I was like, I'm. Probably, I'm probably out of order, but I had this um, muscle suit made, so I looked like um, Incredible Hulk, and that cost an absolute bottom. <laughs> <laughs> an absolute bottom. <laughs> and then I, like, I'm glad I knew that afterwards, because I was like, imagine this doesn't land. <laughs> I'm just like, just, like pissing fibres out the window. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to... What is your role on it? Because... Well, it start. Do you know the start? The, the sort of the evolution of it. It was. It was. Um. It was a one-off. You were Susie's assistant. Was that right? Rachel's. No, I took over. Basically, it was a one-off. This thing they did called a mashup or something, where Alan Carr did took over. I don't know, like an auction program. Um, the buying the house thing. Homes under the hammer. Homes under the yeah. Hammer or something yeah. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then, <laughs> so cats. Eight out of ten cats took over countdown, and then I like. Then one of the things was Rachel started playing the game. Yeah, and the, so they needed a someone in the corner, you know, like doing her job. So I just came on and did that, and I'll never forget it because I like looked at the letters or the numbers before uh, the numbers before I put them out, and there was this audible gasp because no one had ever done it because I was just going. <laughs> But now it's obviously has to go insane because it kind of we pushed the <laughs> what you can do. So you go from looking at the letters. <laughs> I know, yeah, being shot, being shot out of a cannon. <laughs> like, it's looking, um, but they, so I do have to really be, I'm really, really appreciative of this sort of a platform to be able to just do mm. lots and lots of stupid ideas. Um, and, you know, like, I sometimes go, yeah, that's just mad that they then go. I send them a script, 
Uh, I've got one in a couple of weeks, and, I, and I'm trying to work out how much that's going to cost. But <laughs> probably <or> not. <laughs> and uh, they just they like I'd say in twelve years they've like had two things they couldn't do, uh, but they found solutions to doing something very similar. What were the two things? I can't off the top of my head. It was like I can't remember. One of them was like because it maybe involved like like holding a gun or something <laughs> like, and they were like like if something happens in the news you probably don't know but like if if you something happens in the news that that someone's shot or something yeah you then looks really distasteful mm. so they were just like that and then they found but they they don't just go what i mean is they don't just go um to write something else they go they give you like a, a few ideas that you can then take away and right sort of mull over what would work and stuff like that so it's just it's just sort of mad that they let me do it. It's great though, isn't it? I feel way too old to be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I did one. I had like forty foot long legs, right? For I can't remember the idea. <laughs> for whatever long, reason, really long legs, or whatever. I've had. I think the joke was something. I've had a growth spurt, or whatever. You know, <laughs> eyebrow stuff as well. And. Uh, <laughs> And so they go to me, like, just before you come on, we'll, because I was on, like, wires, so they've got to hoist you up, you know. Uh, but, but it's in a studio, it's a lot, you know, it's like in front of a live audience. So we're going <laughs> to have to lie you down at the side of the stage and then sort of hoist you up last minute. And I'm like, I'm in my late 40s. I'm lying there, and people are walking past me, and I've got massive 40 foot long legs, and I had a real low. <laughs> Like, what am I doing? <laughs> but everyone was really sweet, and they and it and it worked, and I was I got I got through it. But um, but I was just lying there. Like, like a war. <laughs> I was just lying there, going, fucking hell, forty-eight. Occasional, like some sort of twenty-two-year-old runner, really lovely, going. Do you need anything? I need to fucking grow up. <laughs> We we had um, we had Rob Beckett on the show, oh, uh, and, and we asked him this question. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it, just real quick. Um, yeah. Who's because th- there's not always just comedians they have on these panel shows. There's yeah. like, so like celebrities and stuff like that. Who's a non a co- funny? Who's a non comedian who you find is he's really surprised you? He's really funny. Uh, it wasn't from Countdown, but I did a I did a thing with um, I did a pilot for like a a show, and I, I had. Um, it was like a, a mistake of a, like, I, I can't even remember the concept. It wasn't fully thought out. Um, but I had Krishnan Guru Murphy on, and he was brilliant. Like, he, so I had this thing, because it was really stupid. And there, the idea was a lot of stuff in post that would then look quite weird. Like, I, I, um, I said, because I was asked him like quick fire questions like you, but I said, I'll be honest with you, my feet are starting to swell up. So, <laughs> Like, can you just like not, <laughs> like just not mention it? <laughs> so, so we're doing these questions, and and my feet are swelling up, which we obviously put in post. And uh, he's just like glancing down, like once in a blue moon, and just ploughing on. And and, I, and his old attitude was was sort of um, professional, but like I'm better than this. And he just played it brilliantly. Yeah. It was really funny. <laughs> I was like, wow. So, and it was so good because he's known for the complete. Yeah, opposite. Mm. He was just—I just thought he was brilliant. He was so funny. Yeah. I love it. And one of, finally, one of my favourite comedians ever, and one of, one of the goats is the legend that is Sean Locke. Yeah. What was it like to work with him so um, so regularly? I oh he he was the best. He has the he was the best. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I used to say to people, don't compare yourself to Sean. There's no point. It's like, <laughs> you know, like because you do, you naturally sort of. As a, you compare yourself to each other and you go, oh, no, he's brilliant. But I was like, Sean, don't, you know, it's like sort of taking Messi out of the argument. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's sort of like, you know, there's lots of great footballers, but, Messi, you know, forget Messi. Yeah. Mm. Who's the best? So it was sort of, <laughs> sort of like that. And uh, I think Sean, um, John summed it up when he passed by saying, like, I was I was a massive fan before I worked with Sean and that. That didn't change, basically. So mm. that, that I was like, yeah, that's exactly what it was. I was like an enormous fan, and then I got to work with him for so many years, and that, you know, just 
I'd have loved to have met him. Yeah. He just was just so brilliant. Mm. Like, I kind of, the idea, like he, it's probably, I'm not going to do it justice here, but I, he had so many, said so many things. I sat next to him so many times and he'd say something that would just be unbelievably funny. And, but I said to him after this one, I said, I said, what, why, why, how did you, why did you, how did you make that work? But the joke was, and I won't do it any justice, but he basically was talking about like his great uncle or something. And he was a mariner of, or, or captain of a ship or something. And he's like, he was famous for being the first person to leave, uh, to leave Southampton and turn left at the Solent. And the, <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> Basically, if you turn left, you go back to Southampton, mostly. So I was laughing. Everyone was laughing. And I was like, no one really gets this joke. <laughs> but they know because it's short. Yeah. It won't, there'll be a bloody good reason. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no one's going to know that. I only know it because I look at apps. Of <laughs> <laughs> and I was laughing so hard. I was like, that's so niche. That's so niche. <laughs> That no one is going to get it. <laughs> and you did it on television. <laughs> and I was just like, well, there you go. And, and people were laughing their heads off because yeah. just the way he did it was yeah. just so stupid and funny. Yeah. So Aww. sadly missed. 